thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Welcome, Exchange family from all over the world. I'm Kiana Holloman, one of your hosts of Chief Chat. Today's Chief Chat has the chat, but no chief. Chief Osby is away, meeting with leadership to discuss ways to improve the quality of life for our military community, and we're wishing him safe travel. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce my co-captain for the day, Emily Stars. Hello, Kiana. How's it going? Hey, it's going so good. So as you guys know, we're headquartered here in Dallas, Texas. So it's a big time in Texas. It's a state fair, great vibes, good energy, good weather, finally. So it's all good over here, Emily. Yes, no, that's awesome. And I want to just thank the soldiers, airmen, Marines, sailors, Coast Guard members, and military families for joining us today. And you did mention the state fair, which I'm going to the state fair today. Um, and our guest is... I think has ties to the Texas State Fair today. Yeah, he does. No, I'm super excited about our show today. So many of us know today's guest from his days as a guitarist with Selena y Los Danos. He's also a Grammy award-winning musician who has just released his latest single, Pushing Ahead, under Malas Palabras Records, founded by comedian George Lopez and Carlos Santana's lead singer, Andy Vargas. He's here today to give a military exclusive look at his career, business ventures, and his band's return tonight at the State Fair of Texas. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Chris Perez. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. No, it's a pleasure to have you with us today, Chris. So where are you joining us from? I'm actually in Dallas with you guys, um, being that we go up. Uh, I think we start playing at 8.30 tonight. So I've been in town... Uh, for about four days now, uh, preparing for the show. And also there was another event that I had on Saturday and Friday night, actually an award show for um, the hot sauce brand that I have. Oh, that's exciting. Welcome to Dallas. So you actually grew up in San Antonio though, right? I did. I did. Grew up a, a Cowboys fan, you know, since, <laughs> since I was a kid. I remember yeah. every Sunday they on on TV, so. And we're doing good this year. So yeah, I, I actually, that went, was. <laughs> I actually went to the last game. Really? Oh. The, uh, the that was like a blowout, right? Wasn't it like yeah. 25 or something? <laughs> it was a good game, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And so as a native Texan, I grew up as a Selena fan. You were a rocker before meeting the Quintanillas and joining the band. What influenced you to play Tejano music and what are some of your best memories of performing with Selena y Los Dinos? Well, like you mentioned, I, I did start off playing rock. That was, you know, as a guitarist, that was my first love. Um, and just playing in different bands around San Antonio locally. Um, and it kind of led to a friend of mine that I had had since middle school was related to a singer that was playing town on music at the time. And he asked me one summer, would I consider playing with them? You know, that we'd make, there was more money in that, to be honest, uh, to make as a musician playing town on music than there was doing the rock thing in San Antonio. I figured I'd give it a try that summer, see how it went. And just things kind of started snowballing for me in that genre. Um, and I took pride in being able to bring those other elements of my playing into Tejano music and into eventually Selena's band. Yeah, and for those who don't know, you are also married to Selena. And her legacy as a Mexican-American artist paved the way for other Hispanic and Latino artists, such as Jennifer Lopez, Becky G, Selena Gomez, and many more. So how does it feel as a musician to see this generation of Hispanic and Latino artists making such an impact on music worldwide? I mean, I'm, I'm super proud of Selena's legacy and, and the music that she left behind and to see um, so many other uh, Latin women and uh, in our culture just uh, because of Selena be a lot stronger and, and Selena being an inspiration for them. Um, it's I, I'm really proud to see that going on now. Having said that, um, you can't be a Jennifer Lopez or a Becky G without a lot of hard work, you know, so kudos to those ladies, too, for all their accomplishments and, and all the great things they're achieving as well. 
And speaking of cultural impact, the Chris Perez Band makes the return tonight, like we said earlier, one of the biggest stages in Texas, the State Fair of Texas. What can fans expect to see tonight? Well, it's definitely going to be a rock show. It's, it's a, surprisingly, there's still a few people that show up that expect Tejano music because of my past, which, uh, that, but they're always pleasantly surprised when they find out it's, it's a rock show. Uh, I always get a kick out of that. But we're going to do a bunch of stuff off of my, my um, Chris Bettis band album, Resurrection, that we won a Grammy for. And we've got a handful of new songs. Um, and for sure, we're going to play the new single that I'm actually singing on, which is called Pushing Ahead. And um, looking, looking forward to seeing the crowd's reaction to that, me stepping up to the microphone as a lead vocalist for the first time. No, it's exciting. I know Emily's going to be there. I might go to the fair, of course. I have to see you, but I haven't been to the fair since it's been in town, so I have to go at some point, and hopefully tonight is that night. Um, but speaking of rock music, so how did your time playing Tejano music kind of influence your sound now? Oh, well, just just being in the same room with those guys, with, with Selena and the band Los Dinos. I mean, those guys, it was a very special time in my life, and uh, they were super talented, and it only made me that much better. And the whole band in general was influenced by so much of what pop music was in that time, and R&B, and Selena obviously just was a mix of all different kinds of styles. And so just to be put into that environment, for me, uh, I grew leaps and bounds in, in, in the time that I spent with them. So just to be able to do what I'm doing now, I always, there, there's a big part of me that carries, obviously everything I learned back then from um, AB and, and the guys in the band, Rick Vela, especially keyboard player, uh, music major, uh, he showed me a lot. So the music video for your latest single, Pushing Ahead, it dropped last week, so congratulations on that. So what was the inspiration behind the music video? Well, I think everything recent has stemmed from just making it through the pandemic, you know, when we were kind of all strapped down and uh, couldn't do much. And as, as a musician, uh, not only myself, a lot of my other friends are, are, are musicians as well. And we were just kind of in this, we, we didn't, we didn't know what was going to happen next, if it was ever going to kind of get back to normal, somewhat normal. And in that time, I just started seeing things a lot differently um, and not being such a, a quick no to a lot of uh, suggestions or ideas or opinions and, and being more open to things. And so pushing ahead um, came about organically. Just it, actually it, the, 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 the guitar riff came to me in a dream. And I woke up and I opened up my voice recorder and I just kind of recorded it really quickly and then we got to work on it and everything just started happening organically, quickly. The lyrics came quickly. I originally sang it just for demo purposes, which I had never done before. And I thought that was going to be the end of it. And now here we are with the song final mixed and everything and the lead vocal just stayed on. Um, everybody, all the guys in the band had heard it and agreed you know loved it thought it was a cool thing to do so um we're 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 pushing ahead you know just like we did through the pandemic no i love that i do too so chris the band is signed to malas palabras records and i do apologize for butchering that if my spanish teacher is watching this right now she's probably just rolling you her eyes good. oh thank you yes Okay, as, as mentioned earlier, a uh, record label founded by comedian George Lopez and Santana's lead singer, Andy Vargas. Can you tell us more about this new partnership and how it came about? It came about pretty quickly, the actual um, working with the record label. But oddly enough, George and I had met um, Many years ago, I, I can't, I don't even remember. I know we were doing an award show in Miami. I want to say it was the Latin Grammys. Um, and he was hosting that year. And I think we were coming back from a sound check the day of the show. And, you know, everybody stays in the same hotel usually. Um, 
with events like that, or at least it was like that back then. And I was getting in the elevator and I had my guitar on my back and my gig bag. And as the door was about to close, I heard somebody kind of running and I heard like this clanging and, and hey, can you hold the door, hold the door, you know, the elevator door. So I stuck my hand out and then in walks George Lopez with his golf clubs. I guess he had been out <laughs> golfing that day and we struck up a conversation in the elevator. And then I saw him later that day when we were doing actual rehearsals on stage and he was at his podium going over what he was going to say. And um, that's kind of how we started our friendship. And Andy and Carlos have been friends of mine since I think we met like in 1995, 96, somewhere around there. And Carlos has actually been over to the house and invited me to go up and jam with them, which I did. Um, one of the coolest experiences of my life to be able to walk into your stereo, so to speak, because that band is amazing. And um, another time that it was like the, my guitar just felt like it was playing itself. When you play with such great musicians, uh, that's kind of what happens for me anyway. So when Andy had approached me, Carlos the singer, he originally approached me to play guitar on a song with another artist that they were working with at the time. And so I played guitar on the song. I liked it. I played guitar on it. And then I played the guitar solo, added some more parts because they asked for that as well. And then next thing I know, we were talking about the possibilities of me working with them as an artist on their label. And that's kind of how it, how it all started. It was really organic. It was quick. And I couldn't be happier. No, that's good news. It's always good to work with people, you know, that you like, you enjoy, and the friendships are helpful too. So we're really excited to see, you know, what comes to fruition out of this new partnership with George and Andy. But um, Chris, not only are you a Grammy award winning musician, which is a super big deal, you're also an entrepreneur. So you found time to dabble in business, which is not easy at all. Um, in the film Selena, there's a scene where John Seda, who portrays you in the movie, he pulls out a bottle of hot sauce and he sprinkles it all over his pizza. So how did your love of sauce in general inspire your entrepreneurial pursuits? Well, yeah, like most things that happened with me, it happened organically. I was, um, I, I used to, I still do actually carry around a bag of, of Serrano peppers in my whatever bag I'm carrying around with me at the time, whether it's a backpack with my laptop or whether it's just a smaller bag with my wallet and sunglasses, there's always a bag of peppers with me. So um, I was sitting, we had this, this uh, business meeting, my business partner and myself, um, Mr. John Gomez, um, Tongues of Blaze is the name of the company that we created for the hot sauce. So we, were, we had another meeting that we had attended, we're going to this fancy restaurant and you know the food comes and i just reach into my bag and I, I put the peppers on the table and i'm biting as i'm eating and i just notice my boy john he's just looking at me you know and he's like you ever thought about starting a hot sauce company and i said i mean i would love to but where do we start or where do i start i don't i don't know you know uh, what the first step in doing anything like that and he said let me make some phone calls and then we'll get to work and see see what happens and it's kind of the same thing it ended up being the same thing that kind of for me when i wrote the book um the, the to selena with love i kind of like surrounded myself with a team that i was comfortable with that i knew um knew what they were doing had done it before and we kind of surrounded ourselves in the hot sauce company with people that um are a one in the game you know and so it was just a pleasure going through the process learning all of that stuff getting it in store shelves now it's on amazon.com and at perezpeppersauce.com and it's been a, it's been an amazing journey we've actually won some awards with the hot sauce um we won some with the original that came out and then just um friday night this past friday night we won some more for the habanero version that was the latest release. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way things are going with that. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah congratulations. <laughs> and yeah, Chris, I'm you're talking about the peppers now. Oh, sorry, Kiana. Well, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to know one thing about the peppers that you carry around. So are you like growing these Serrano peppers and like pickling them or something? Or like, do you have a favorite that you carry with you? <laughs> the, the easiest ones 
and they're probably the hotter ones would be the serrano peppers and uh -huh. I grow, I do grow them, but those, but I mean, you know, that's like a lot of time and love and, you know, and <laughs> investment in, 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 right. you know, just making sure they're okay. So I found out it's just a lot easier to go to the local grocery store and pick a handful, <laughs> put them in a bag and be, be done with it. But, but I do grow, I do grow, but it's just more for like, just to have them, you know what I mean? They're yeah. growing in the, in their pots out there. Okay. That's awesome. I uh, can barely eat like a banana pepper. I have like no sense of, I cannot handle spicy food. I wish I could, because I heard that like can really enhance the flavor of food, but I'm a little yeah. bit of a baby. So kudos to you for just have, eating those like nothing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a gradual process. You know, you got to start <laughs> really baby steps and then I don't even know how it happened next thing I know we're eating the hottest I mean there are things that are way too hot you know what I mean it's not I'm not like that but I do enjoy a good kick you know most people they 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 can't understand it <laughs> you know my dad actually makes salsa and I remember like years ago I was in high school I hear him like do the loudest yell because he like bit into a ghost pepper and like you walk in the kitchen smiling he thinks it's he did just something big, but yeah, so I cannot do the spice either, but hats off to pepper fans everywhere. <laughs> I met, I met quite a few at this zest fest here in Dallas on Friday and Saturday. And, um, this was my second time going and like the chili heads are just amazing. Um, I love them so much. I love hanging out with them and there's some characters out there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I love that. And Chris, your father served in the U.S. Army. Um, what can you tell us about his time in the military and how was it being a military brat? Well, my dad was, he wasn't, he was a paratrooper and, um, but he, it was, it was right. He was already out right before I was born. Um, but oh, okay. my grandfather, yeah, my grandfather on my, on my mom's side, uh, he was military for a really long time. And so I just remember, uh, like going to San Antonio has a lot of, um, military bases out there, or they, they, they've changed the name. So, so, so much by now, I don't know what is what anymore, but when I was little, there was, a, there was quite a few. And I remember my grandmother, I remember the process of having to go through, you know, the checking in and seeing all the, the fighter jets that they have on the stands, you know, as you drive by and. Um, it was just always an interesting uh, experience to go pick him up from, from the bases. Now, and honestly, we have service members um, in America's Armed Forces currently watching and their families too. So what would you like to say to them today? I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for your service. Um, me and as well as like my, my entire crew, um, are very appreciative for that. And as a matter of fact, uh, when we went to the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys game this past Sunday, um, quite a few military um, people in uniform, you know, that had uh, been part of the uh, Cowboys game experience, whether on the on the field or just even just being there. And uh, a lot of them, had, you know, came up to me and I got to meet meet quite a few, take some pictures. And then I, I made it clear and, and I told them personally, thank you very much for, for what you guys do. I really do appreciate it. That's awesome. And your fans are tuned into the live stream as well. And you're receiving a lot of love. And I'd like to turn very quickly to the comments and read a few comments with you, if that's okay. Sure. It's a lot. It's a lot of scrolling. <laughs> so this is great. This is great. So we have so many people here. Um, there was one question that popped up, and this is a good one. Um, so Lori wants to know: You are at the state fair. What is in there in Texas? State fair is known to have different food every year. What is one food you are going to try or have already tried at the fair? I don't have one specific, but you know, usually, cause we've played there a number of times in the past. I've, I've never played uh, 
I've never headlined the main stage like we're going to do this year, but you know, I remember playing there with Selena and also um, with my band a few years ago, and I just had them bring a bunch <laughs> of stuff back because it's really hard to walk around and experience it the way that most people would. We, I've tried it in the past and I couldn't get a few, but a few steps in and I was like, you know what? I don't know if this is a good idea. So we just had runners or people in my crew, man, go look, bring us back a bunch of stuff. Cause you know, I def and Anything I want to do that again this fried. year. Right. Anything deep yeah. fried bring over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've seen so many things on the news, you know, that, you know, because a lot of the news broadcasts, they're, they're doing it from the state fair. And so I've seen all the different boots. So I have some ideas of things that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have specifically, you know, looked for. I love that. And you've got your peppers on hand, too. So you can yes. make your own little mixture with them. That's perfect. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. Tim, Tim is uh, so thankful that you're here. She says, thank you for being with us today. Um, Clark says, hello, um, Elena loves your new single pushing ahead. And, um, there's just so much love on here. Love the new music. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Hot sauce. We love it. Um, is, and then Vanessa is asking if there's any chance your daughter, Cassie will be joining you at your future shows that's up to her um we had such a good time when when uh, she did do it and she did it on one of the biggest stages um and she, she did it like a champ i was really proud of her I, I didn't know what to expect you know and as a dad i was just trying to keep everything all calm and oh this is just another day you know in the life of and but really inside i was like oh my god i hope every you know i hope she doesn't freak <laughs> out and you know, because it's a whole other thing to, to to be in a room with my band and, and playing some music and then to walk out on the stage and see all the, the faces. But she got so much love and um, she enjoyed it. I had a great time. I get emotional just thinking about it. Uh, the invitation for her is always there, of course. So um, I'm hoping she takes me up on the, the invite <laughs> soon. Oh, I love that. And Perla, um, who mentioned she has a birthday tomorrow so happy early birthday Perla um and happy she birthday. says she, yeah oh she's gonna love that birthday shout out thank you and she says uh your video of pushing ahead is awesome um and Julie said it is time for corny dogs and fried cheesecake um and there's just so much love we just can't thank you enough Chris for being here with us today well, it was good talking to you and, and thank you for having me. It really does mean a lot. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I can't wait to see everybody out at the State Fair today. Yes. Now, as a reminder for our viewers, you can watch the Pushing Ahead music video on YouTube. And if you're local to the Dallas area, you can meet and greet the Chris Perez Band at the State Fair of Texas at 5.30 p.m. and catch their return performance at 8.30 p.m. tonight on the main stage. And Chris, it has been an honor talking with you today. Um, and do you mind sharing with your viewers where um, we can all go to keep up with everything Chris Perez? Sure. Um, you know, social media is probably the best place. I have an Instagram account now and Facebook, Chris Perez Music. Um, and on the Instagram account, there is a link tree that you can click on that's got any up upcoming uh, performance dates or meet and greets or releases of anything uh, that is related. So for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch it with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, October 11th, when we welcome Malinko Matajevic, or Jevich, it's the itch part that gets me every time. Donka should, should have taught me that um, to the show. <laughs> also, join us again at... 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, October 18th, when Lieutenant General Charles Hamilton joins the chat. And Chris, thanks so much again for joining us today, and thank you for all you do to support the military community. Having you with us means so much to our nation's heroes. We wish you all the best. We can't wait for tonight. I will be there. I'll be just, you know, jumping, waving in the back. Um, and if you don't 
mind um, hanging on after this live so Kiana and I can um, say our formal goodbyes. Okay, yeah. sure. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Okay, ready, Kiana? We're ready. Three, <laughs> two, one. Cheese chat. chat at all. <laughs> <laughs>